In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. I say, Thoroughly 
Even though you have four decades on me in energy and strength, okay, Matthew Spidell, two decades on me in energy and strength, that's not the heart of it either for you, is it? It's your own hearts that struggle with the sins and temptations of this world. You also don't have it all figured out. And there's no veil. No veil available to hide that. I'm sorry. 
You are jars of clay. So am I. So what was God thinking, right? You are the hope of our synod. For the pastors and teachers and staff ministers that we need to fill vacancies, that we need to proclaim the gospel. You, clay jars. What is he thinking when he chooses people like you, like me? Why did he find those who are truly impressive, like the angels, who do have to say, really, don't be afraid? His holy angels do the Father's will perfectly all the time. Why wasn't that God's plan? It's not. Never has been. His plan has always been to use clay jars like you, like me, to carry the beauty of the gospel, to make it very evident that the glory is not about us, but about his love that draws near to us. That's what the very first verse of the section you chose for us says, isn't it? We have this treasure in jars of clay, to show that the all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. There it is. The surpassing power is God's. It doesn't come from you and me. The glory of what we seek to share is not about us at all. The story about us shows a need for it. The story about God shows his answer. And God's delight, dear jars of clay, is to pour into you, is to pour into me the treasure of his gospel. Sisters, brothers, God has loved you with an everlasting love. He has known you by name from before you were ever born. When he saw your need from eternity, it did not turn him off. It appealed to his fatherly, merciful heart to reach out to you and me, to fill that need. And in the water of your baptism, the treasure of Jesus, his forgiveness was poured on you to wash you from every sin. His holiness of his life lived in your place, covers you. And ever since, ever since, he has been pouring out that treasure to you and to me day after day to fill us. It's objective number one of Martin Luther College. You can find it on the website. To pour into you and to me the gospel of Jesus. To fill us with faith and hope in him. Jars of clay? Yeah. I don't have to deny it, neither do you. But treasure filled. And then comes the really good part, is that he guarantees to all those who go on into public ministry that your life will be charmed from then on. Uh, No, not exactly. In fact, quite the opposite. The gospel ministry is a great gift. It's a joy that can know no ending of work whose fruit never stops. But in this life, in this life it's born under the cross often. Understand that Satan hates what you've been trained to do. Hates it. When a Christian who has been filled with the treasure of Christ overflows, when someone in the public ministry overflows with the gospel that's been poured into you, it destroys his kingdom. He is not happy about that. And so not only does he mark every Christian with a big red X for destruction, sheep to be slaughtered in his mind, he especially marks you who would go into public ministry. Because when you pour out the gospel, you do him great damage. Remember that. Remember that when troubles and difficulties come, when it's hard to train for ministry, when it's hard to serve in it, that's not a sign that you've chosen the wrong vocation. It's actually a sign you've chosen the right one. Because Satan hates what you would be doing. 
Do not be afraid by that. For not only you are you clay jars, treasure filled in Christ, you are indestructible. The last half of your chosen verse tells us that. You heard that, right? We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Hmm. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal bodies. Remember in 2 Corinthians, often when Paul's going, us and you, he's talking about all those who were in the public ministry to you, the Corinthians, to the Christians of all time. Here he is talking about what we, those in public ministry, often will face. Do you hear it? Hard-pressed on every side. Yeah, the pressures can seem to come streaming in from every direction. But you will never be cornered. The Lord Jesus has your back, always, every time. Perplexed, the times that come that you just aren't sure what to do, what the next step should be. And you lay awake at night at times wondering about it. Perplexed, yes, but not in despair. The Lord Jesus knows. And he can take even our perplexity and turn it into opportunity to accomplish his purpose. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Unless we hide our faith. Not only will Satan hate us for what we do, but a world is not going to be pleased. You are proclaiming that the glory is not us. The world, like us, also by nature proud. <laughs> that glory is Christ, that brings persecution. But you are not abandoned. Never will I leave you, Jesus said. Never, never will I forsake you. Struck down, but not destroyed. Struck down, picture a, a quick shot to your solar plexus, right? Where, oh, <laughs> you can't, you're fighting for air. Those times in life in ministry, in particular in ministry as you're thinking about it, when all those plans for the kids or the teens or the congregation just go, seem to go nowhere, that which you worked so hard for just falls apart. Struck. But then you remember what Jesus said to Paul in 1 Corinthians 15. Your labor is never in vain because it's in the risen Lord. Yes, you are going to carry around with you the death of Christ wherever you go. And yet through all of that, What's the final result? Paul said it. So then, death is at work in us, the called workers of Corinth. Huh? But life is at work in you, he said to the members of that church. So it is. Clay jars. Treasure filled. Indestructible. Remember what a relief it is to know that. Brothers and sisters, you do not have to spend your ministry as if you needed a veil to keep anyone from noticing that you don't have everything all together. What a burden that would be to think that's how we have to go about it. We can be honest. We are clay jars. That's what we are by nature, by ourselves. You know, in the mental health crisis of our world today, this is going to sound really weird, but there's a part of it I find refreshing. What? Sounds odd, huh? Here, here's how. I think it, in some sense, is honest. That until heaven, even we as God's children do not have it all together. 
that we can be honest where we struggle and hurt. But you have the treasure that the world doesn't know about. They don't know an answer. And so for them, it's complete perplexity. Despair. But you are treasure-filled. You are treasure-filled. You know the love of God that surpasses all understanding that knows no measure of width and length and height and depth. It's yours. And as God pours that into you, all he asks, all he asks of you is to overflow with what he gives you. For many of you, we came in together at MLC four years ago. Yes, there are five years here. You had to help me get used to the campus. And you have grown in these four or five years more than you will ever know. And now it's my distinct pleasure to watch as we send you out. Go, sisters and brothers. Clay jars. Yep, you don't have to hide it. Treasure filled, boast of him. And go with confidence, because in Christ, you are indestructible. Amen.
John Hammond. Nathaniel Hinsey. Aaron Jobes. Song Gon Kim. Christian Kalpine. Josiah Kalpine. Liam Kopp. Aiden Lewis. Jackson Lindemann. Caleb Little. Seth Marquardt. Reagan Moore. Max Nordley. Carson A. Strike. Nathan Palsma. Maxwell Plucker. Eric Reim. Robert Reinke. David Rucho. Isaias Santos. Joel Sauer. Zach Shoreline. Elijah Schultz. Silas Steinbrenner. Lucas Stiles. Camden Salsley. Gustav Wentz. Yu Gong Yang. Michael Zimpelman. We next confer the Bachelor of Science in Education degree, and we begin with those majoring in early childhood education. Hannah Bartman. Anna Billets. Natasha Caveza Velasquez. Hannah Esme. Michaela Kaiser. Natalie Mapes. Megan Muskie. Taylor Natali. Grace Nelson. Esther Robinson. Sadie Schultz. Hannah C. Katie Tauscher. Alyssa Walther. We continue with the Bachelor of Science in Education degree and those majoring in elementary education. Madeline Abel. Michaela Albrecht. Eric Barch. Margaret Beam. Matthew Boisman. Paige Biesterfeld. 
Serena Blasi. Aaron Bodie. Anna Borgwart. Naomi Bridgman. Grace Brown. Nathaniel Brown. Michaela Buboltz. Emily Chia. Ethan Coffey. Grace Deck. Matthew Emmendorfer. Alana Fick. Allison Fleege. Brooke Flunker. Hannah Foley. Brian Friesenegger. Karis Glendy. Jewel Hiding. Stephanie Hintz. Megan Kieselhorst. Leah Klammer. Sarah Cromer. Lydia Cranky. Alyssa Nash. Tatiana Parker. Madeline Plitzewhite. Aliana Rautenberg. Amanda Rayberger. Caitlin Rodmeyer. Erica Schlomer. Hannah Schrader. Nicholas Schrader. Caitlin Schwab. Isaiah Terry. Claire Tomhave. Anna Treder. Madeline Waltz. Amber Wenman. Next comes the Bachelor of Science in Education degree and those majoring in middle and secondary or K-12 to education. Zachary Cole. William Costin. Kincaid Dearson. Andrew Grady. Emma Holzen. Jaden Kaler. Caleb Lash. Jacob Lair. Ethan Mallow. Matthew Rieger. Nathaniel Rudiger. Renee Rudiger.
Jake Villauer. Annalise Wentz. Joshua Zander. Rebecca Cole. Mason Cox. Kylie Gregorius. Jordan Heckendorf. Spencer Lilienthal. Christopher Robert. Next, we have those earning double majors in the Bachelor of Science in Education degree. One graduate earning a double major in early childhood education and elementary education, Malachi Dunn. Earning double majors in elementary education and middle secondary K-12 education, Samantha Bierke. Catherine Belke. Jenna Boggs. Matthias Borgwart. Mackenzie Crowley. Mackenzie Holzbauer. Tyler Holtzeder. Michaela Kadrowski. Olivia Krieger. Marissa Martin. Alicia Mengel. Abby Mitchell. Leah Newsart. Matthew Spidell. Kristen Ewer. Noah Ungamak. Another graduate earning a double major, this time in elementary education and in our staff ministry program. Katherine Coplin. Earning the Bachelor of Science in Staff Ministry, Alexis Walk. Josiah Wardell. Earning the Bachelor of Science degree and majoring in Educational Studies, Rebecca Bieberitz. Sylvia Louth. Sean Zumbach. Earning his certification in the staff ministry program, Benjamin Hofferman. Our next group of graduates looks a little different. These are graduates, well, I mean, you're dressed a little differently. You look fine. They haven't been able to be stopped or contained either as they've been serving in gospel ministry and they've taken the next step to improve themselves professionally, ministerially. You can do that in a lot of ways, workshops, seminars, courses. They've chosen to, done, to do so. They have done so through one of our master's programs, one of our graduate programs at Martin Luther College. They've attained that next level degree. They're a tremendous example to all those who are seated here. To all those who are seated throughout the gymnasium, we never stop reflecting, learning, growing, improving professionally, ministerially. We ask God that they never be stopped or contained as well. We begin with, the, with a Master of Arts degree majoring in theological studies, Jonathan Favorite. 
we continue with the Master of Science degree in education and its various emphases, Zachary Bloomquist. Todd Brasso. Elizabeth Broering. Lisa Erickson. Abigail Galecki. Daniel Rainhilt. Brittany Steinfeld. Nicole Wagner. Tasia Chanel Wolf. May Jung. Mark Zellner. We continue with those earning the Master of Science in Educational Administration and its various emphases. Adam Billets. Paul Brown. Brian Hack. Donovan Wagey. And we conclude by conferring the Master of Science in Special Education, Courtney Benke. We pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the good and perfect gifts that you give us. We remember especially today the gift of this school of ministry, the blessings of the past school year, parents and all others who support the training of future ministers of your word with prayers and gifts, faithful students who apply themselves to their tasks with diligence, dedicated faculty and staff who follow your ways and our church body that comes together to proclaim the good news to all people. O Lord, bless our graduates. Bless those who will begin public ministry as teachers and staff ministers. Give them strength and joy in their work of sharing the gospel. Bless those who will continue their preparation for pastoral ministry at Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary with patience and resolve. Lord, hear our prayer. Bless those who will serve you as lay members in their congregations or at international fields of service. Lord, hear our prayer. In all we do, give us the strength of faith to do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus as we give thanks to you. Hear us as we ask these things in his name and pray as he has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated.
graduates. I have the distinct honor, please stand and turn. <laughs> I have the distinct honor of presenting the cl class of Martin Luther College of 2024. Can be seated again. It's probably the last time they'll listen to me. <clears throat> Please allow another brief recognition of those who are completing service to Martin Luther College with the close of this academic year. I would ask you to hold your applause until I have acknowledged them all, at which time you can express your thanks to God and to them for their service he worked in them. Allow me to do the math for you. We are thanking God and them for 125 years of service just to MLC. Professor Larry Zare, the Lord called Larry home to himself in heaven last summer. Larry is enjoying a gathering far beyond this one in its beauty and grandeur, but Larry's wife Ramona is with us in the balcony. Larry served DMLC and MLC for 31 years as a professor of English and as a coach. Admissions counselor Alyssa Heckendorf. Alyssa, up there. Alyssa served MLC this year as one of our admissions counselors. She is leaving to be married this summer and to serve in whatever way God has planned where her soon-to-be husband will be serving in his vicar year. Thank you, Alyssa. Professors, Professor Brian Hennig and Professor Grace Hennig, both. Brian has accepted a call to serve as editor of our Synod's Northwestern Publishing House. Brian, who earlier served two years as an instructor at DMLC, served MLC the past 11 years as professor of theology and history. Grace announced her retirement from the public ministry with her husband's acceptance of that call to NPH. Grace served our college in three different ways over the years, as a music instructor for one year, an adjunct choir director for one year, and then for the past 10 years as full-time professor of music. Grace has just accepted a one-year retirement call to teach eighth grade at Peace in Hartford, Wisconsin. We have two of the world's shortest retirements to announce. <laughs> Dr. Robert Clinworth. Bob, whose wife Marty is with us in the balcony as well, has announced his retirement at the end of this academic year. Bob has served MLC for 20 years as professor of education and served the college also in various roles with the Minnesota Department of Education and its Non-Public Education Council. Mrs. Aaron Labs and Professor John Labs. Aaron's in the balcony. Aaron, whose husband John has accepted a new position in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, has served MLC for seven years as forum advisor and director of our fall musical. And John, who accepted that position in Milwaukee, has served MLC for the past seven years as professor of music and choir director. Thank you. Mrs. Maya Pashan, uh, Maya was not able to be with us today. Maya has served the past three years as a teacher at our Early Childhood Learning Center Meyer and her family are moving to Lewiston, Minnesota. And finally, Professor and Admissions Counselor Lori Unke. There's Lori. Lori announced her retirement from full-time ministry at the end of this school year. Lori served as Professor of Physical Education and Coach for two years, and for the last 15 years has served as one of our on-the-road admissions counselors. Lori just accepted a retirement call to serve as a dorm supervisor at St. Croix Lutheran Academy in West St. Paul, Minnesota. Thank you, Lori. Brothers and sisters, let us express our thanks to God and them.
You thought my sermon was long. I have a few more announcements. Uh, As we're exiting, please wait for all the participants to be excused, including the emeriti, uh, before you exit to greet the graduates. If you're coming back for call service, please remember to bring your worship folder with you. And if you don't want to keep yours, kindly hand it to one of the ushers gathered at the doors. We will be resetting the gym after graduation for call service. We're going to remove all reserved signs. If you'd like to keep your signs, well, take them with you. And we will reopen the doors at about noon central time uh, you would li- if you'd like to reserve seats at that time. Uh, the cafeteria is open for lunch today if you would like to make use of it. And we thank you for your prayers and support for our graduates as you pr- in your presence with them here today and in the future with your prayers. And I have one last announcement. Just a moment. There is one more. In the spirit of it's always easier to ask forgiveness than permission. If you are counting with me, you said, hey, Gurgle, you only listed 109 years of service to MLC. You're right. 16 years as of yet are unnoted. This is Michelle Gartner. It's concluding 16 years as our MLC event coordinator and, ironically, as the marshal of graduation, so I knew she had to be present. She has accepted another position in our fellowship, and we will miss her work with us and her work on graduation, but we thank God for your ministry in our midst, Michelle. God bless the rest of your day. Thank you for being here with us.